Hey, it's the preacher. For this portion of the uh, video, I'll be wearing examination gloves. No, I didn't get them from a doctor's office. I don't know what gave you that idea. Maybe that I've got them there before. Could be. Today we are going to smoke a deer shoulder. And it's very rare that I get to smoke a deer shoulder because I tend to shoot deer in the shoulder. Now I know the experts say shoot them behind the shoulder, through the lungs, but I have found a deer with two legs doesn't run as far as a deer with four legs. So I try to break both legs. And if it's angling away from me, I try to break one leg. If it's angling to me, I try to break the leg nearest me. Anyways, I try to break a leg because deer don't run as far with a broken leg. I know they can, but they naturally don't. So I have the best part of a deer leg. I've taken the shank off. Uh, I don't eat the shank. The shank is all tendons. Tendons is what they make bow strings out of. If you like to eat bow strings, go get your bow out of the closet and gnaw on your Matthews. There's a outer layer of of flank meat that goes down the rib on the outside of the shoulder that's been removed here's the shoulder blade it's been trimmed down and basically we've got a big meaty port portion of meat in between um, the shoulder blade and I guess the um, I don't know what you call that maybe the bicep similar to that something I don't know shoulder anyways and then we've got the uh, the, the two sides of the shoulder blade so it's a pretty pretty meaty portion of meat that, we're, that we've got here. Now why do we want to smoke a deer shoulder? Well a deer shoulder has a lot of tendons in it, a lot of connective tissues. And so when you cook something low and slow, you dissolve some of that cartilage, you break down those tissues and it allows the meat to, uh, to kind of break away from that so that you can pull it apart. And we're going to pull it apart like, uh, like you would pull pork. So. The first thing you need to do is wash it all off after you've got it cleaned up. Wash it off. I had this one in the freezer for a month or so. And then you're going to need to get a rub or some kind of seasoning. It doesn't matter what kind. I'm going to be using possum salt. Possum salt is, uh, you can't get it in the grocery store. Uh, you can only get it here. And uh, so if you're good, Santa might bring you some for Christmas. So I'm going to liberally cover this in possum salt. I've got a good bit on there, and now I'm going to rub it in. And by rubbing it in, I'm forcing it to make contact with the meat. And since possum salt has some salt in it, it will draw moisture out of the meat, and therefore it will stick. Now that you've coated that side, coat this side. What's that old John Anderson song? Rub it in, rub it in? Or maybe that was Hoyt Axton. I think it was Hoyt. Either way, rub it in, rub it in. Get it all good and coated. A generous amount. Of course, you can't just put straight possum salt on there. That, that stuff's too strong. So, uh, I got something else over here we can cut it with. This is just a mixture of peppers, paprika, salt, garlic, onion powder, everything you find. If it tastes good, put it in there. That's, that's kind of the gist of it. Okay? Now, that's our rub. We've got everything good and coated with rub mustard now i can anticipate it right now i know there's some people out there going i don't like mustard well use mayonnaise it doesn't matter what you use nobody's going to eat this and go D did you put mustard on that you're not going to taste the mustard the mustard is going to be on the outside of the meat encountering the smoke and it's going to cook into oblivion all it's going to do is put a a barrier on here that holds the moisture inside the meat so that the smoke is attacking the moisture in the mustard or mayonnaise or whatever else you want to put on there but use something like I prefer mustard because it's more water based than mayonnaise which is oil based 
So we're going to coat this thing liberally with mustard. Well, if I don't run out of mustard, we're going to coat it liberally. Some people put the mustard on first and then rub the spices in there. Well, that's okay. It's America. You can do it wrong if you want to. There's no law against doing it wrong. But I'm not seasoning mustard. I want to season the meat. And I want the mustard to lock in the seasoning that I put on the meat. So I want mustard on the outside, seasoning on the inside, and meat to be locked in. Alright, notice I'm keeping the hand clean over here in case I need to pick my nose or scratch. Okay, seasoning on the meat, mustard over the seasoning, we've got a coating on there. That's one spot right there, I didn't get it. Okay, we got a slurry of mustard and seasoning on there. Now we're ready to go to the smoker. I've already got the smoker going. It's been going all day. When I smoke meat, I smoke all day. I cook everything I can. I run three or four batches through there. Get back, champ. That old shepherd was eyeballing it. There, That might be a better look for you. That orangey color is a mixture of yellow mustard and all the seasonings I put on there. And as you can see, we got it fully coated. I still got my clean hand. That's how I move the camera. Got a pork butt in there right now. I'm going to lay the thin shoulder blade away from the smoke. The heat's going to be coming from the firebox. So I want the meatier portion facing that way. The pork butt is bigger than the deer shoulder. So I've got the pork butt closer to the uh, firebox. I'm going to put the pork butt down here on the end. If you're looking, you ain't cooking. That is was sitting at about 300 when I opened it up, and that's 300 on the top. So I'm saying it's probably 275 down there where the meat's at, maybe 250. Anyways, let's check on the uh, on firebox. I'm just running oak logs off that tree that fell over in the backyard. And uh, I'm going to leave that just like it is. Let it heat back up and keep it around 300. Let's have a look. Well, as you can see, the uh, pork butt's looking pretty good. The deer roast still likes about another hour. I don't know how well this is showing up, but I always start out with two layers of foil. A bigger one on the bottom and a smaller, a little bit smaller one on the top. Here's a deer shoulder. Not done, obviously. Not cooked. We didn't claim for it. We, we, we never claimed it was fully cooked. What we did was put a layer of smoke on it. What we did was make a crust out of that, that, uh, mustard and seasoning so all that's on the outside everything's got a layer of smoke to it so now we're going to wrap it up real good and tight and this is why i like to use two layers of foil and i lay i lay them kind of crisscross i lay it long this way and long that way in the, on the next layer so there now I took that off at the joint, so I have a rounded edge there and a rounded edge there. If you used a saw and you sawed that bone, then you'd have a good chance of that bone poking through your um, through your foil. So by by not using a saw on it, we don't have to worry about that. So there, two layers of foil. There's what you end up with. Nice little neat package. I don't know if you can see that, but I got the oven set at 250. 
I've got my deer shoulder wrapped up tightly. I had two pork butts on that pan. I just took them off. I'm going to put it in there. So I want this to cook in the oven at 250 for four hours. 250, four hours. That'll kick off sometime during the night. I'll go to bed when I get up in the morning. The oven will be cooled down. I'll be ready to pull it apart. I'll see you in the morning. Sleep tight. Good morning. My name's Dr. Harold, and I will be doing your examination today. We put this in the uh, oven last night. We set it to go off in four hours. So we had five and a half hours on the smoker, four hours in the oven at 250. This is what it's going to look like. You notice when we look at it now, the meat is just pulling away from the bone and you can grab it. I don't want to sling it all over me and pull it off there. And then you can take it and it just shreds real easy. So what we're going to do is I have some, uh, some barbecue sauce right here. We're going to take the deer meat and this is fully cooled. I mean, it's cool to the touch. You're going to have some little pieces of membrane. I don't like eating it. Some people just throw it in there. I sit here and try to go through it and pull it off and just put muscle in there. Anyways, I'm just shredding it. This is all we're going to do. You won't be able to keep a clean hand. Since it's a shoulder, you're going to have a lot of that. But the meat is going to pull off of those membranes real easy. And there's your kind of jellied membrane. Now, if you were doing the shank, you remember I cut the shank off. We just had the shoulder blade down to the... Uh, what do we call that? Elbow? Yeah, and so I'm pulling the little chewy stuff, the sinew, stuff they make bowstrings out of, <laughs> cartilage, all that stuff's going. So when we get up here, you have a uh, kind of a blade, you have a shoulder blade. And that meat just pulls out and then you can just sit over here and string it out. And you can make it as fine or as big as you want to. I like to have some people chop it with a knife and that's probably good. You're never going to get a deer shoulder as tender as you could say a pork shoulder because you just don't have the fat to work with. You've got a darker, tougher meat to start with. I mean this thing grew up in the river bottoms. This is an old deer. But once you, once you break that away and you get all this, see this rubbery t sinew stuff? Inside that you have meat that's just tender as can be and you just it just pulls apart in pieces So I take my time and I go through here and I pick all the individual pieces out and anytime I come to something that looks like a Rubber band I throw it in the other pile and give it to champ pile or give it to brownie pile He's over there taking a leaf bath Anyways, no need you watching me do this I'll show you what I end up with when I get done. Just see what I'm doing. The meat's coming off easy. You just have the big membrane you got to get out of the way. The meat's tender. So I've got some meat in there. And what I'm going to do now is I have a mixture of store-bought barbecue sauce with a little cider vinegar to thin it down. And the cider vinegar kind of permeates the meat and gives it a little more moisture. Makes the barbecue sauce a little softer. And then I take, and I, I'm not really, this is going to give the meat some moisture so that it doesn't dry out. Because when you start shredding these muscle fibers, they've cooked, they've contracted, now they've relaxed, they've soaked back up some of the moisture, but when you tear them apart, all that moisture evaporates. So you add a little thin down barbecue sauce. That's really, really good. All right, that's what I ended up with. About a third of a commercial pan full. I've been mixing it. Of course, I've been eating it. You know, when you when you stir it around, you're trying to get a light coating of barbecue sauce. You don't want it saucy. You just, you want it to have some moisture to it. But every time I stir around, I keep finding pieces with my name on them. I have my name on them. 
So, if you find yourself with a deer and you didn't run the shoulders and you're wondering what to do and you're tired of grinding meat, I recommend smoking it. Smoke it, finish it in the oven. If it's still too much work for you and you don't want to pick it off like this, pull the big chunks of meat off, throw it in the crock pot, add some barbecue sauce, get it, get it moist and let the crock pot finish the tenderizing. Um, I'm going to be serving pulled pork tonight at church and uh, I think I'll take this and see if anybody wants to try some deer meat. There's another one with my name on it. Man. Thank you all for watching.